Yes, yes, yes. to pick up because I don't have your part.
Good evening, friends, and Merry Christmas. As we uh, enter this feast of the Nativity and celebrate once again the remembrance of Christ our Lord, born to us this night, our Savior now and always, listen with me in this invocation. that we may be exalted. You became poor, that we became rich. You came to us, that we may come to you. You became a human being like us, that we may be drawn into participation in your eternal life. All of this from your free, undeserved grace. All of this is your dear Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are gathered here in view of this mystery and wonder to pray to you, praise you, and to proclaim and hear your word. But we know that we cannot do these things under our own power, that it is you who free us to lift our hearts and thoughts to you. So we ask you to come now into our midst. Show us and open to us the path to you through your Holy Spirit, so that we may see with our own eyes your light that has come into the world, in order that our lives may indeed be witnesses to you. Amen.
Isaiah's vision, found in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold with it justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. candle for joy. Almighty God, as we light our Christ candle, we pray you would ignite a fire within our hearts. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel. I invite you to stand with me and sing O Little Town of Bethlehem. Draw near to the manger with a humble heart. Almighty God, guide my journey to the manger. Show me the light of your star. Lead me by my hand and pull me close. Help me to adore your Son. Give me your gift of never-ending love. Amen. Fear not, for to you a Son is given. And, and his, his name, name will be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, Counselor, Mighty God, God Everlasting Father, Father, Prince of Peace. Please pray with me. 
gracious and loving God, for you are born to us this night in the gift of a small child. Let these words that we hear and let the spirit that you fill us with sustain us and send us forth into a new year filled with your hope, with your mercy, and with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As some of you may know, and as many of you may not, I have a twin brother, and my twin brother and I are similar in some ways and very different in others. My, uh, my twin brother is uh, a little shorter and a lot smarter than I am, and more than that, he's very, very talented in, when it comes to music. So much so that he spends his Christmas, the entire month of December, doing a series on a YouTube channel that gets far too little attention called Christmas Songs on Weird Instruments with Matt, where throughout the course of the year, he spends a lot of time and I think money uh, accumulating bizarre instruments from every corner of the world and weird uh, like hodgepodge local jobs like someone who's welded the horn of a tuba onto the end of a French horn and it's played like a trumpet. It's called (laughs) the Franken horn. I mean if you can call it a musical instrument at all. And yet, uh, he releases one of these videos every day through the month of December, and he's into season five of it. That's a lot of instruments. There's repeats, but not enough repeats to really understand how he who lives in a very small apartment building or apartment does not have it all come crashing down at any given moment. And I I raise all of this to to make the apology to you that if you, like me, are a fan of Christmas songs on weird instruments with Matt, as I encourage you to be, then you'll know that the story I'm about to tell you is one that he told this morning, and I feel like I need to to say off the bat that I had this written before he told the story, so I didn't know exactly how how to come up with the transition point. The song Silent Night that we will close our worship with this evening was written in 1818. It's just celebrated its 100-year anniversary just a few years ago. And like many hymns, its story is amazing by itself. If you've ever wondered why is it that uh, Protestant people sing so much in church is that our faith is contained within those hymns. The theology and the stories, and not just the stories that the song tells, but the story about how the hymn was written. They're stories of amazingly gifted musical people, blind from birth like Fanny Crosby, who wrote hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hymns, so many that she had to write under a pen name because she was afraid that no one could possibly believe that she'd written all of them. But Silent Night was written on December 24th-ish, somewhere uh, around that time, 1818, in a little town in Austria. And the church and its pastor had a problem. The organ was broken. And if you can imagine, that's a pretty big deal when the organ is the source of music in the, in the region and the pastor facing down this moment in which he, he wondered, how can we have our Christmas Eve service without music? Found himself wandering up the streets until he reached a little overlook and looking over the vista of his small town and parish he was reminded of a poem that he'd written many years earlier, a poem about Bethlehem, a poem about the silence and peace of Christmas Eve. And filled with a new spirit, he took the words, he went and found the poem in his writings and took it to the church organist who wasn't doing anything else and said to him on Christmas Eve, I'd like to do this song, or I'd like to do this as a song, can you write something? And the organist took a, I assume, couple of hours, put together a chord progression, and then, because the organ was broken, 
they played it on a guitar. Because it was the only instrument that they had. And when I look and reflect upon the realities that we have faced as a people over the last two years, I wonder if sometimes we aren't in that same position where all of the things that we expect, all of the things that seem normal, all of the things that seem comfortable feel a little broken. And I wonder if that's not part of the magic part of the love of Christmas Eve, of the Feast of the Nativity in which we remember that we as a people, the people dwelling in Bethlehem that night, the people safe and warm in the palace in Jerusalem on that night over 2,000 years ago, that they were gathered together, huddled against the cold, and yet in their desperate heart of hearts, they knew things were broken. The powerful ruled without mercy. The unjust were in, had enslaved and conquered the people of Israel. And in their hearts, everyone gathered in that inn that night wondered, are we broken? Are we broken? But... The miracle of Christmas, the miracle of God's presence with us by the, by, through Jesus Christ is not that Jesus arrives in power and majesty, not that Jesus arrives with great heralds from every corner of the earth, but that Jesus arrives not in the inn where all feels broken, but just outside. In the silence and humility of a stable, love enters our world. And all that's in the inn that worries that it's broken, that nothing will ever be the same, gets their wish. Because this child has come to mend our brokenness. And nothing will ever be the same again. So as we face ourselves boldly into a new year, a new celebration, a new cycle, allow us to remember and give thanks that Christ's presence for us is not a reassurance that nothing will change, but indeed a remembrance that this night, above all others, reminds us that God will change us for the better if we simply step outside the madness and the noise of the inn and seek love, not in power or popularity, not in wealth or splendor, but indeed in simplicity, in poverty in service and in love, that we might go forth being servants of the King of Kings, born to us this night in a stable. Even when things feel broken, even when we don't know what tomorrow will hold, God steps in to give us a new song and a silent night. The gospel lesson on this, the feast of the nativity, is from the evangelist Luke. I invite you to stand with me and lift up your hearts as we hear the gospel. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. 
Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made, made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The word of God for all the world. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. I invite you to join with us in praising and giving thanks for this child by singing Away in a Manger. On this night, we add our prayers alongside all who, especially in, across the Midwest and Kentucky and other places where destruction has struck in the tornadoes so recently. We remember those this night without a home. We remember our sisters and their families down at Main Street Ministries, whom through your generosity, we have been able as a congregation to offer a great gift. New objects, yes, but more than that, a spirit of family in this community. That when they look upon those pots and pans and those simple gifts, they know that our hearts are with them and with all who this night and every night search for hope in what feels like an ever-darkening world. As we allow the peace of Christ to still our minds and spirits, I invite you to be in prayer with me. O Lord, 
our King and our Savior. Let us celebrate this festival without false ideas, but with our hearts open to receive your word, your promise, your commandment. Our grumbles and doubts, our errors and our mistakes, our stubbornness and defiance should trouble us even during these days of joy because they trouble you. But as we rejoice at your birth in the world, we ask you to accept us and uplift us as we are. And we pray that in your strength, we will be willing to be counted among the poor and humble as you counted yourself on that cold night so long ago. We remember before you all the darkness and suffering of our time, the manifold errors and misunderstandings that we, your humble creations, afflict upon one another, the harsh realities which so many face every day without the benefit of comfort, the great dangers that hang over the world that we do not know how to counter. We remember the sick and the ill, the needy, the refugees, the oppressed and the exploited, the children who have no good parents or no parents at all. We remember all those who are called on to help as much as people can help, the officials of our country and of all other countries, O oh God, the judges and civil servants, the teachers and educators, the writers of books and newspapers, the doctors and nurses in the hospitals, the workers in the field, the workers on the line, the preachers of your word in all the various churches and congregations near and far, that your gospel of freedom, O oh God, may be proclaimed more cheerfully and joyfully by both Protestant and Catholic alike, that we would become the salt for which this world longs. We remember them all when we implore you to let the light of Christmas shine brightly so that they and we who lift our prayers to you now may receive your assistance and love. We ask all of this in the name of our Savior, who in his infinite love has heard our cries and answers us with grace this night and every night. And so we pray the way that he would teach his disciples to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My hope is that you had a chance to see the sign inviting you to take a candle when you entered. If you have not had an opportunity to do so, guess what? I forgot to. So as I meander slowly towards the back of the room, and you need a candle, you're not going to be alone, is what I'm saying. <laughs> if you were with us last year, you'll remember that we changed our traditions ever so slightly, as the last two years have invited us to change so much. But this year will follow like last, where we will proceed outside. It's a little warmer than last year. I'm grateful my fingers will have a much easier time playing the guitar. But uh, we will uh, share the light here in this room and then proceed outside once everyone has their candles lit. We'll make a circle out here right outside the doors 
and we'll sing through the verses of Silent Night, which are helpfully on the back of your bulletin. So be sure you take that with you. If you are new or need a reminder on proper candle etiquette, remember, the one that's on fire stays upright. The one that's waiting to be lit is the one that comes in at an angle. If you do this, well, hot wax is going on something. I don't want it to be you. And the trustees don't want it to be the carpet. So what we will do is uh, I'll, I'll collect the light and then I will move to the insides of all these pews. And if you're the lucky person sitting there, you'll just be the first and share it down your row. Everyone have a candle? I like it. I like it. David, do you have a candle? What I enjoy about this is that this is the invitation of Christmas. Not that we would just gather in holy places to remember the gift of Christ this night, but that we would take that light and carry it out into the world from this day and every day. So, with your blessings with mine, let us share the light of Christ together. Friends, I invite you to stand and follow me outside. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, brown yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and
I lost count. My friends, may the blessing of Christmas, may the blessing of Christ surround you and keep you this night and surround you and keep you. That when people ask you, where in this dark time does your hope come from? Where in the midst of all this can you possibly find hope? You can tell them it's not in power, it's not in popularity, it's not in wealth or glory. It's in a stable. It's in humility and service and love. May you take the blessing of Christmas with you this night and every night. My friends, Christ is born. Merry Christmas. Amen.